on. Next up, crypto banks are going to swallow fiat banks in three years or less. And my question is, is it going to be three years? Do you think it's that uh, that amount of time? Who knows? But uh, this is what the article states. And first, before I go on, this is written by Mark Bins. And Mark, he's a CEO of Big Digital Assets, Inc. He believes the future of crypto is safe. First ever occurred in 2013 and was hooked. So this guy's been in the game for quite a long time. Again, he's a CEO of Big Digital Assets. Mark oversees Blockchain Intelligence Group, maker of Key, L-U-E, and BitRank and Netcoin. So he seems to know what he's talking about. And this is an interesting article and one that I can totally relate to and I totally agree with that banks are on their way out. They either need to adapt and overcome or they will be buried. So this is what it states. Within a few years... A younger generation of financial services customers are going to be able to walk into a bank, any bank, and gain access to credit products, savings accounts, and investments that can host both crypto and fiat assets. And this totally makes sense. With Kraken coming into the mix, and they were able to get a banking license, which is an officially chartered bank now. Well, it's going through the process. It means that Kraken will be able to offer more banking and funding options to existing customers. It also means that Kraken is going to be able to operate in multiple jurisdictions without having to deal with state-by-state compliance plans. And this, there was an interesting uh, podcast, and it was on Anthony Pompliano just about five days ago or so, and it had CEO David Knitsky. Uh, he is from Kraken, and he talks about everything that has to do uh, with Kraken Financial and uh, the bank, ac- not the bank, ac- but getting into the banking s- uh, sector, uh, going into Wyoming, getting that license and, and what it all means. And one of the things that they talked about, which I didn't know, was that they're going to be able to operate throughout the entire United States, all 50 states, and then they're looking to branch out globally or international. So uh, this is going to be big. Um, I mean, I don't know how it's going to work f- for everybody, but for me, this is fantastic because I've got four banks now for all my businesses, and uh, I cannot wait to leave them in the dust because they suck. The only that doesn't suck is USAA. That's my personal bank. I love them. Other than that, everything takes way too much time. The fees are a little bit too outrageous. And uh, when Kraken gets this all going, I will be the first one to open up multiple business accounts with Kraken. Let me step down from my soapbox and finish up with this article. So the states, Kraken is currently working with Silvergate Bank to offer SWIFT and Fedwire funding options to U.S. customers. When I first met this or read this, I was like, why are they working with SWIFT? That is archaic and old school. Why do they do it? I think it's because they have to work with the infrastructure that is already uh, in place for different banks. If you don't know, uh, SWIFT is a very old organization. It is uh, essentially what allows wire-to-wire bank transfers to happen. It was created in the uh, late 60s. I think I want to say 1972. Someone fact check me on that one. Uh, but it's been around forever, and uh, they don't innovate. <laughs> they don't really upgrade. They've done some things lately because of especially because of cryptocurrency, but it's still awful. And uh, so they have to work with them. Uh, The one thing I wasn't too sure of was what the heck is Silvergate Bank? I've never heard of them. So I had to look up Silvergate Bank and here's who they are. They're based in La Jolla, California. Silvergate is a Federal Reserve member bank and a leading provider of innovative financial infrastructure solutions and services for the growing digital currency industry. So that is exactly who Kraken is working with right now. So great. So what you've got is banks who they can read the writing on the wall, the smart ones, and they go, you know what? We better work with these guys because uh, we're on our way out. So to finish up, Silvergate Bank is a step ahead of the rest of the moment. The company boasts 880 digital asset companies as clients, and these clients have deposited more than $1.5 billion with the bank. That's still a small amount of money relative to the market capitalization of most major banks, but just be aware. That that's not the only player in the space because it talks about right here, major crypto exchanges, Coinbase and Gemini are new customers of JP Morgan, even though Jamie Dimon denounced the value of Bitcoin and told his employees that if he catches anybody dabbling in Bitcoin, he would fire them. So just so you know, Jamie Dimon, not a dumb guy. So JP Morgan is going to be uh, on that bandwagon of, hey, uh, where there's innovation, well, we're not good at innovation. So we'll just uh, ride the coattails down that road. And this was the most interesting sentence in the whole the whole article. It says consumers will soon define a full service bank as one that offers financial services in both crypto and fiat. And it makes sense. That's what I'm looking for. I think that's what you you might be looking for as well. When I go into a bank, there is no reason for me to go to one and go, hey, uh, I need to uh, get Ethereum. 
because I want to purchase that because I think it's going to go up and and maybe I need it for whatever else reason. So can I just buy that here? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sir. We're, we're Wells Fargo. We're going to do that trash. What? Okay, well, I'll just go on the road to Kraken and then they have everything and then I can do a business and a savings account. Uh, I might be able to do other things as far as financial, maybe a loan, maybe a mortgage loan. I'm not for sure. I could buy my cryptocurrency. Maybe I can do atomic swaps. Then we can do a bunch of other things that you guys are supposed to do, but don't do because you're not innovators. So let me just walk down the road. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think people who are going to get used to it and it's going to be one of those things. It's the same thing as like you want to get a, a truck tire and then also you need a frozen pizza. And then maybe you need toothpaste and maybe you need formula for the kid and diapers. So where are you going to go? Well, you go to three different stores or four different stores, or you just go to Walmart because they got everything right there. So the same thing is going to happen here. It's going to be a one-stop shop. And I think the ones that innovate and actually do these things will survive. And the ones that don't, uh, there's the door. Again, Blockbuster versus Netflix. So scrolling down to the very last end, it says, what will happen if banks don't join the party? Any bank still approaching crypto with trepidation over the next 18 months, 18 months, that's more like it, is at risk of finding itself dead in the water at the hands of Kraken and other banks. So those are my thoughts. Now, uh, I could be wrong, but uh, banks, there are not known for innovation. However, there's a difference between innovating because that's what your customers want and innovation for survival. So I think at some point, some point very soon, banks will have to innovate just to survive. And uh, it's funny, sometimes when you wait till the last minute, it only takes a minute. <laughs> and that's what I think is going to happen here. Let me check in the comment section. Let's move on to our last people.